real happy to do this interview right here with a guy that I've known for, I think, about the last four or five years, somewhere uh, in that range. Chris Dolak does a lot of work for World of Outlaws, Dirt Car World Racing Group. He's the director of marketing, so he could be doing anything from coordinating a victory lane at a big show to uh, coordinating big events coming in down the road. Matter of fact, he's already working on a lot of the stuff for the World Finals and Dirt Week for next year. So let's head on down to Mooresville, North Carolina. 52-year-old father of three, Chris Dolak, joins us here. Uh, I was going to say Doug's Dirt Diary because I'm in the same studio. Chris, how you doing, man? I'm good, Doug. How are you doing tonight? Doing very well. If you want to see a quick thing with Chris, go back to an interview. I tagged him in it uh, from Super Dirt Week. It was my last lap around the uh, around Oswego, and I got a chance to actually talk to him on the camera. I was put, watching some of the stuff Chris has been doing. It was just a little over two years ago that he came about as close as you can get to not being here today. I, I read what you wrote, man. It was really nice. You really are thankful to be here, aren't you, Chris? I'm extremely thankful to be here. Yeah, I, I uh, after a little over two and a half years of uh, uh, of uh, you know hoping and in, in, in praying that uh, things are going the right way, and, and you know a lot of checkups in the middle of, of battling a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma deal. Uh, just got the Christmas gift uh, this past week of uh, doctors saying I'm clear and, and good to go and uh i you know and some of that you know you, as you go along the process you kind of you know you, you'll know you can kind of tell now you know, listen to your body and whatnot but uh the uh the, the one that got me was when he said there was a less than three percent chance of it uh, coming back that wasn't a phrase that i was expecting to hear in that that uh, meeting in the exam room uh, uh last week so um that was pretty good to hear um you know, it, it puts it in perspective because it was the same guy who, when this all started back in August of 2020, uh, same doctor who, you know, had a pretty stern look on his face when he's you're laying there and he's telling you all the different things that uh, that you're about to face and what you're dealing with and uh, the potential and the odds and all that stuff. And, you know, to be a little, you know, almost two and a half years later to have the same guy go hey you made it you're good to go um it's a you know it's hard to put that into words um so uh i'm you know obviously very thankful and uh um you know i i've uh i've you know we talked about before i've kind of shared the journey along along the way just i think it's been as therapeutic for me as a is somewhat of a journalist uh to be able to kind of detail as I've gone along just to put it out there and, uh, and along the way it's, I've gotten a lot of calls and comments and texts and messages and things from people who are either dealing with the same thing or something similar or just learn that they had it or whatever. And, and, um, you know, being able to offer up whatever experience I can, it's usually th these things are different for everybody. Um, not, it's not usually a hundred percent the same, but, the uh, you know what they're about to go through is not too too far different in some cases. So if I can offer up any sort of advice on uh, you know do this, don't do that, and uh, you know drink the orange stuff, not the grape stuff. <laughs> you know if you can do that, you can at least make it a little bit better for somebody. I hope. Yeah, and there's a lot of people out there for various reasons um, that are dealing with a multitude of situations. And maybe some of you who are listening right now, what advice would you give to them? Because you have good and bad days. There's just no way around it, is it, Chris? No, you know, so like I said, for, for well, I'll start with this. The main thing that, and it's probably the hardest thing to do because you can just, you, you got to try to force yourself to stay positive. That is the main thing. If you can stay can be upbeat and say, look, okay, this is, you know, I was dealt a bad hand here. Um, there was nothing that I did that brought this on. It's just, you know, they, they couldn't, they, that's probably the most frustrating thing is that you don't know why it happened. <clears throat> so the doctors can't tell you. They just said, hey, it's not hereditary, so it's not a family thing. It's not like you've given this hmm. to your kids. You just, you know, got the bad straw here, the short straw. So, but anyway, so the main thing is you really got to got to keep a positive attitude. And when you keep a positive attitude, everybody around you stays positive. And, um, you know, and, and having an incredible group of people supporting, whether it was 
you know, my family first and foremost. Um, you know, my wife is a physician, so she was able to really explain the terminology that the doctors are telling me. I would sit there and I'm like, okay, well, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know how to spell that word. <laughs> yeah. And she could put it into terms that, that made sense to me. Um, and then, uh, um, you know, my, my racing family, uh, was just absolutely incredible. Everybody stepped up and, uh, the world of outlaws family to my dirt car family, you know, they, they made it possible for me to deal with everything that I was dealing with and, and really not miss a beat, you know? And, and then, I mean, I guess if there's a, a fortunate part of it, um, I mean, this happened in the COVID year when we were all kind of trying to figure out how to even put a season together. Yeah. So you had that aspect of it where you, you know, you didn't have a race necessarily every other day like we do normally. So, you know, that was a probably a, a bit of a blessing too, where it was a lot more workable to, to do the different things that we had to do. And, and um, it was not the same type of pressure um, that, you know, to, that you, Obviously, we, there were there were events where we couldn't even sell tickets to the event. So, as a guy who's kind of charged with figuring out how to put butts in seats, um, you know, to be able to spend a week in the hospital and not have to worry about how you're going to sell out an event because you know you're you're hooked up to all these these pieces of equipment that uh, you know not much you can do about it. So, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean it, uh, but staying positive. Um, Joey Saldana, who just got inducted in the Sprint Car Hall of Fame, would uh, he texted me one day uh, the acronym T P O P T, and I said I replied, okay. I said, what yeah, what's is that? that? Yeah. <laughs> and he said the power of positive thinking. Oh yeah. And so he would he would text me that on occasion, and uh, you know put a smile on your face. So. You know, just that sort of stuff and, and being able to lean and ask, you know, Paul McMahon, most people know Paul is a great sprint car driver and all that, but Paul's wife went through um, breast cancer not that long ago and uh, beat it. And, uh, you know, her attitude, of course, is defiant and uh, and very positive. Like, you know, that's not you, – you get the diagnosis and you go, well, that's that's not going to be the end of this. this we're going to – we're going to – beat this like a like a rented mule right the old hockey frame so you need a little so, attitude almost Chris. yeah and uh so i i did uh, you know like paul was real helpful i would text him questions on occasion just about different things like you know hey how long before my hair is going to be gone mm-hmm. uh you know and, and he was very front and um up right up up front about answering those questions and didn't make you know miss mess around with it he was like this is what's going to happen here it could be in this frame or this but it's like i said it's different for everybody so he could basically say this is what jane when it happened with her this is what happened here and what happened there so it kind of gave me a little bit of a um you know, somebody I could just at least bounce yeah. a few things off of uh, as I was going through it. Yeah, fresh from just, the trenches and knew what to say. Yeah, and, I mean, just, yeah. just for guidance, just to kind of know, like, okay, what's going to happen next or what, what could potentially happen next. But the the, the crazy part of, of my deal, um, the, the initial tumor that uh, – or not the initial one, the last tumor, it, it turned out there were four. Um, three of them I had no clue about, um, so – it was probably a good thing. The, the last one uh, managed to hit my my spine right at the kind of the base of my spine Jeez. and kind of went upwards a little bit. And what it did was it hit a nerve that uh, uh, affected my ability to walk. I didn't know it got so, that bad. By the way, we only have a couple seconds left, Chris. I can't believe yep. that this time has gone by so quickly. So we're going to actually break this up into two parts. And I'm going to keep Chris on the line, and we're going to come back and pick it up at that point with the, right where we are. Because, again, I don't, want to, I don't want to short this out. But, again, I, like I said, I'm limited by my format here to 10 minutes. So you can stick around. We can do another one right after this, Chris. You got it. All right. Again, hit the blue E, subscribe. Look for part two. I'll make sure I air it the very next day. I'll make sure I air that tomorrow. So make sure to come back from that.